he didn't actually say that. What he said was that the British people don't want a general election now, whereas my <laughs> listeners, a lot of them, oh, think sure, actually, a lot of them actually, actually do. We, I mean, Sean's sure, sure, no, 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 very no, no, vociferous. On the, oh, no, 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 I was going to say on the doorstep, nearly sure everybody sure wants that. Well, I mean, there clearly is going to be an election before January 2025. Mm. Um, when do you think it will be? Well, the rumours I'm hearing is that it could be rolled up into May next year or it could be autumn. Those are the two dates. And, and <coughs> it, it changes every week almost well, as to which one of those it would be. I doubt whether even Rishi Sunak has got I the know. faintest But idea. he said yesterday morning there will not be a general election anytime soon. He was very definitive about that. And but then to, lots of people say that. He wants to give himself as much time as possible, mm, right, to well. get on the front foot. And obviously right now they are not on the well, front foot. Well, no, he didn't actually say that. What he said was that the British people don't want a general election now, whereas mm. my listeners, a lot of them oh, think... Sure, actually, a lot of them actually, actually do. We, I mean, Sean's sure, sure no, 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 very no, no, vociferous. No, 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 I was going to say on the doorstep, sure nearly everybody sure, wants but, 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 yeah. but this is the thing with Rishi Sunak. He makes up facts all the time, like he said. In, you know, we've taken control of, of inflation. We've done this. We've done this, and it's none of this is factually based. And well, actually, well, inflation is coming down, but yeah. it isn't down it at, is at the level. At the level, do you know? No, he said, but halve it by the end of the year. Yeah. Well, we're not at the end of the year. I mean, I don't think he's going to achieve that. He's but, not going to achieve no, that. But all politicians set targets that they want to achieve. But, you know, there's something so weird about this prime minister that he stands up, and okay, Boris had a problem with facts and <laughs> the truth. But I tell you, Rishi Sunak has a whole lot of other problems with facts and the truth. He doesn't... Are you, are you genuinely saying to me that Labour aren't going to introduce a meat tax? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I couldn't possibly say that because, of <laughs> course, when Rishi Sunak... Is, but it just sounds so fake all the time because he's making things up all the time. Why doesn't he get more honest and say, we've got work to do with our National Health Service, I will do better than... And I've been in government for how many years? Instead, there is this fake optimism. We are possibly seeing the decline and fall of the Western Empire. Um, you know, I've just come back from Bangladesh, second fastest growing economy in, in the world. They work 24-7. They produce 60% of our clothes here. It's a, it's a company with a, a country with a work ethic that's... They produce 60% of our yes. clothes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's extraordinary. Fast fashion. And incredible factories, fast fashion. Um, you know, they just leave Incredibly us for dead. Here we are. Incredibly poorly paid. No, bad. no, no, no. They, they, they've lifted, lifted huge amounts of their 170 million population out of poverty in the last few years. Uh, they've really attacked that side, and I've had a good look at it. So, uh, and um, can can be very clear about it. We are stuck in a complete rut in this country. You know, we're working part time. We've got a government that isn't functioning because they're not going to work that they're, you know, managing projects like the one we talked about, HS2 and others, extremely badly. It's costing us a fortune. We've got... Uh, we're, we're, um, we're taking in less than we're paying out uh, in terms of tax and revenue. And no-one is investing in this country at the moment uh, 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 because they want to wait and see what's going to happen. We're taxed too much. Regulation is too high. We haven't had the Brexit dividend that we should have done. And I think that's the task that if Rishi is going to be elected, and I know that people in the Durham area feel the same, uh, that we have got to show that there is a dividend, that we have got grips of, uh, of um, immigration, that this country has got a pathway forward. And I... I I was slightly disappointed that Rishi didn't lay out that path today. But he's running but out of road, isn't he? He's running out of road, of course he is. And he, uh, uh, but funnily enough, I don't think Labour are going to lay out that pathway. I don't feel great optimism with Starmer. You're depressing us all. Well, I'm afraid and it is anyway, depressing. Anyway, you're just about the work fighting. ethic. Why are the, the anti-immigration madness, the work ethic that most immigrants and asylum seekers have, is <clears> priceless, <throat> OK? Why is there this complete madness about oh we don't want any one more migrant is the end of this country when you said earlier the work ethic is what we need yeah we do need work ethic but we need controlled work ethic because we're a very small country and the infrastructure demonstrably can't cope with uh, oh, but they've the, been the, the, saying pe this. the people we've got at the moment well <laughs> i mean I, it, it, they've it, been it, saying this 50 years ago they said it when we came the ugandan nations we were full up. We were going to destroy the National Health Service's school system. Have you? No. <laughs> now they love us. Of uh, course, I love, we got I love you. I've got a lot of you guys today, some friends. But, but <laughs> not me. Not me. <laughs> but, if you get, but if you get back to the conference this week, the infighting or the posturing for leadership 
was quite staggering. Was it? Because Actually, I have to I say, don't I don't. Well, were you there? Well, no, 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 no. Listening I was to people, there. I, I was going to say that some of some of the people who were sending messages back to me saying that, for example, it's the, the briefing, um, the, the the fringe events were better attended than the yeah, main. They always halls. are because, because nobody goes to the main but, hall but, anymore. But no, 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 because I've been at conference at well, all of them <laughs> in my time. Um, but the fact that it was it was really visible that people were talking about what happens next. You know, I think he's were, not I think delivered. Were, I do agree with the thing. Some he people was. were. It was probably a little yeah. bit more under the radar, but, but I think yeah. people the, were talking The about only what one that I think was overtly making a leadership pitch was Suella Brave. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I knew Suella was. I don't was. think Kimmy Bade not Liz Truss? Penny no. Morden did. Well, did you, Liz uh, Truss no. is never going to be back. <laughs> She's not going to be back. I can assure you of that. No, but I think the most interesting thing about Liz Truss will be who she backs because she sacked both Pretty Patel and Swella Braverman. So it'll be very interesting who does she back. But no, it, it's more, it was much more about the whispers about Rishi's not delivered what they thought he would. No, I, I, I'm, I'm afraid I don't agree. I think that my take from the conference was actually how, and I've been to a lot of Conservative conferences, that actually they were pretty united, which was a very good thing and they needed to be. Um, and they, they, they should bide their time anyway. There, there should be no leadership challenge uh, between now and then. It was an opportunity for them to demonstrate their prowess, of course, when a leadership cha uh, challenge happens, but nothing will happen beside the election. So they know they're wasting their time. Uh, and uh, I th the other take was, you know, HS2. I thought that was... Mm. Uh, well, that just dominated everything. Yeah. And I think sometimes... Um, so many journalists say oh, the mood of the conference, and they just, and I'm sure Natasha, you agree with this. Journalists discuss the mood of the conference among themselves. They don't actually go out and talk to the party members <laughs> who are there very right. much. And I, I think that's something that really needs to, needs to change. Um, right, let's quick question. In fact, it relates to what you were talking about, Yasmin, from uh, Milan. Uh, Milan, what, in Ashford. Milan, what would you like to ask? Hello, hello, panel. Um, so my question is on the back of what Michelle Donlan said at the conference. So given the volume of lies and nonsense from the Tories in the last few years, does the panel seriously think that the Tories is the party of facts? <laughs> and that was what Michelle Donlan, the Science Secretary of State, uh, claimed during her speech in the conference hall yesterday. Um, there, there were, shall we say, one or two incidents. I mean, we talked about the, the tax on meat of Mark Harper's 15-minute cities. Um, I mean, they're, they're all... They're, you, you can find a justification, but you have to look pretty hard, Natasha. I mean, when, when they come out with these things, people then put them in the box of world conspiracy theories, don't they? Understandably. Yeah, understandably so. And I think Claire Coutinho got into a little yes, bit of a mess yes, over yes, the meat tax, yes, did she not? Yes. And, um, and, you know, it's, it was the same as Rishi Sunak at his net zero speech. I think all of us, when he said, oh, there was a suggestion that we all might have to carpool one day, and we all just <laughs> looked around and went, did... Was that ever a serious suggestion? I don't remember reading that in any government back reports. Um, but yes, it was a little bit of a, a certain, yeah, pinch, pinch too far, I think. Um, we need to take it with a pinch of salt. It was um, not ideal to hear those things from politicians. And I think it does, it doesn't do, it doesn't do any good for anybody, does it? And doesn't but of do course, the more that this happens, the more we talk about these things to the exclusion of maybe things we ought to be talking about, Jonathan. What, like cigarettes? Well, I don't know. I mean, we, whatever. But it, I mean, it, it's, it's. Yes, I, I agree with you. And you know, the, the, uh, coming back to what I said earlier, is if this government is going to be re-elected, it has got to lay out a very clear an optimistic path for this country, which does not exist. And a moment. believable one. And if and, they come out with stuff like that, yeah. Um, no, it's not believable, I, I, is it? I, I, I don't disagree problem. with you. I mean, I, you know, the, the, there are the, every government bombards us with facts which uh, don't turn out to be the case so they're, they're not exclusive oh, in that oh, don't, don't, don't oh, underestimate oh. what it's doing on the doorstep though to the entire political class no, I'm sure, and course, that's, that is the no, biggest no, shame no, of all no, you're right Gina that's what that's what I was just about to say you know this is this is a this is a cross thing and if, if, if uh, politics is going to regain the confidence in the public eye uh, then they have got to start but, talking but it, I'm sorry but, I've not heard any other politician make up numbers, safe like Suella did. There's a hurricane. What was it? A thousand million people are coming here. These are. This is not how you talk if you're a serious politician. This is politicking, okay? And, and I have, of course, all politicians massage facts, but I've never come across what has been happening in the last three or four months with this lot. 
It's endless. Um, but Gina, your party ought to be at 50% in the opinion polls, a true and fair party. If, if, <laughs> if, 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 if the electorate were really concerned, you would be romping home to victory. Oh, Prime not, Minister Gina Miller. Not, not in a first-past-the-post system, but getting back to what people are saying in the doorstep, is that everyone's being tarred with the same brush, and that's yeah. what's yeah. so damaging. Yeah. Because if people don't... Uh, their next um, uh, response is, they're all the same, we're not going to yeah. vote. And that's the biggest danger in the next election because people don't have confidence and that creates a real depression in the country. Yeah. So the damage cannot be underestimated. A lie today damages people's confidence tomorrow. And we have to, politi politicians across the board have to stop it, mm. have to stop it now. Mm.